Okay, so, uh, well, welcome U.S. Cutter customers to our webinar on, on sublimation, titled It's a Lot More Than Mouse Pads and Coffee Mugs. We're co-hosting this webinar with Jimmy Lamb of Sawgrass Technologies, and we did a, a webinar covering Chromoblast and cotton t-shirts about six weeks ago that some of you may or may not have attended. And that pretty much focused on apparel. Now, this time we're going to focus strictly on sublimation, which is a little bit of a different process than with the chromoblast. And there's a lot more that you can do in terms of materials and blanks that you can work with in sublimation. I also have Levi Hartsog, who's in our customer support department that has or does specialize right now in our sublimation and chromoblast processes. And he's going to also be answering some questions, technical questions regarding um, sublimation and, and the process by which we use the equipment, the, the printer, the paper, the heat press, and we actually make the products. And so he'll be jumping in at various times. and at the end of the webinar. So hopefully when you're done with this, you'll have a, a pretty good basic understanding of what sublimation is, all the different things that you can do with it, how you can make money with it. And we're also at the end of, uh, along the way, we're going to show you some of the packages that we've put together in terms of getting into the sublimation business. We'll also point those out to you at the end of the webinar. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy, and we will get into sublimation. Jimmy? Thanks, Carl. Welcome, everyone, to sublimation. It's a lot more than mouse pads and coffee mugs. A couple of things for you to be aware of before we get started. Number one, the audio is one way, which means you can hear us, but we can't hear you. So if you're desperately trying to get our attention and you're yelling into uh, your computer, guess what? We don't hear you. Okay, the way that you do communicate is through a text type of system. If you look in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you should have a red rectangle with a white arrow. By clicking on that, it opens up your control panel, and once it's open, you can see a text box where you can type in a message. Now, that actually comes directly to me. It does not go to Carl. It does not go to Levi. It comes to me, so I get to uh, see them first. Um, and it does not appear on the screen, okay? So it, it's, you know, it's private, in other words. Now, as we get through the um, seminar today or webinar, um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them in when they come to mind. But keep this in mind. Um, I don't actually see them typically until the end because my control panel is so large I actually have to move it off the screen to do the presentation and thus I may not see your questions. But as soon as one comes to mind, if you type it in, it goes into the queue and then we'll take those questions at the end and get some answers for you. In addition, we'll give you uh, follow-up contact information so that if you uh, have additional questions later, uh, you can contact us to help you get some answers to that. And as Carl mentioned, we're going to show you some specials that U.S. Cutter is going to offer you for attending the webinar today. Okay, so with our topic here, there's a real reason for this particular name, and that's because a guy like me uh, first entered into the decoration business many, many years ago in the apparel end, and the word sublimation was totally alien to me. Okay, and then people used to talk about it because, you know, back then we had embroiders and screen printers, and that was about it as far as the world of decoration. Everybody said, you know, sublimation, they use that for mouse pads and coffee mugs, and that's actually what I heard, how I heard it described, and that's what I thought that you could do with it, and really nothing else because I didn't know any better. So hopefully I'm going to show you just how much more there is out there so that you won't be kind of caught up in that same kind of thought process as well, that this thing is limiting, because it's not. In fact, sublimation today, because of the new technology and all the advances out there, is quite hot and quite profitable, very fast growing our industry right now. So what is sublimation exactly? Well, it's a digital printing process that's similar in concept to how digital transfers work. In fact, it does use a transfer process but it's uniquely different in the chemical process. Now, if you're new to printing, I know a lot of you have been around printing for a long time, but if you're new to printing, chemistry is an important aspect because you have to use different 
chemicals, different um, inks per se, to bond to different surfaces. Okay, so what works good on cotton may not work good on polyester and vice versa. And that's where sublimation comes into play. It's a very unique chemical process, which by the way, works ideally with polymer and polyester fibers for pretty much nothing else. Keep that in mind. Now, one of the things about sublimation, it's not just printing, and we'll use that word interchangeably. It's actually a dye process. And dyes are different than inks. Okay, For one thing, a dye is transparent, which means the color of the dye must always be darker than the background or it ceases to exist for the most part. Um, also, most printing processes actually put a layer of uh, color on the surface of the item being decorated. Sublimation, as you're going to see, is very unique because of the fact that it bonds itself internally with the fibers of what's being decorated. You're actually recoloring the fibers. Okay, So it's not a surface application. It's actually an impregnation, if you want to call it that. Okay, It's down below the surface. Now, to put it real quite quick and simple, with sublimation, uh, we're going to create a transfer and using sublimation dye. And then we're going to place that transfer on some item to be decorated. And we're going to put it in a heat press at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, Chemically, what happens at 400 degrees is two things. Number one, the dye turns into a gas, which is pretty cool. Okay, And the second is the polymer fibers being decorated physically start to open up. Okay, And because they open up, they receive the gaseous state of that sublimation dye internally. And then once we remove the heat, those fibers close back up, and it, it becomes a permanent bond. Okay, permanent bond there. And the result's a high resolution permanent coloration that won't peel or crack. Very important. When we're doing hard substrates, it won't peel or crack. When we're doing soft substrates like uh, poly performance apparel, it won't fade when laundered. Okay? Now, if you put it in the sunlight for extended periods of time, sublimation will start to fade, just like any other ink process out there. But as far as washing it, if you have a sublimated t shirt that's 100% polyester or poly performance material, it will not fade when you wash it. You put screen printing, direct to garment, all those other processes in the washing machine, they're going to fade. Okay? So chemically, sublimation becomes a very unique type of process. It's also a digital process. And when you talk about the digital processes of the day versus some of the older school types of, of printing and decoration, some of the things that come to mind are quick setup, very quick setup, as you're going to see when you go through this quick and easy to get this thing rolling. Unlimited colors. You know, if you're a screen printer, you know you have some limitation on color based on your equipment. If you're an embroider, you have limitation based on the number of needles on your machine. When you go into digital, you're mixing colors. You're taking base colors like they do at Home Depot. You're mixing them together to create virtually unlimited coloration. Very low production cost. We'll touch on that as we go through. No special skills required. If you've done screen printing, you know about color separations. That to me, that's a skill. Okay, nothing I particularly like. And nice thing here with digital, it's not required. And finally, it becomes an ideal short run production solution because time and again, there's a lot of people that just need small runs. They don't need big runs. And if you come from a background where you have an intensive setup for a process, you don't want to do short runs. It's not profitable. Uh, with sublimation, it's pretty quick to set it up, so short runs make sense. Okay, I mentioned before the polymer aspect. Sublimation chemically bonds with polymer fibers. It does not bond with cotton. It does not bond with wood. Now, you may see wood products have been sublimated, but what it is, it's a wood product with a polymer surface or polymer coating. That's how it was able to be sublimated. So keep that in mind. Now, don't feel like that limits you, because we have companies out there like Unisub that literally make hundreds of unique products that are sublimation ready. They're designed specifically for that. So very important, when you see a coffee mug that has been sublimated, it's not a mug that came from Target. It's a mug that had a polymer coating added to it for the sublimation to bond properly with the ceramic materials. Very important thing to keep in mind. But you have no limit, really, to what you can sublimate out there. And another neat thing on the sublimation, is the fact that it can reproduce in such fine detail um, and clarity photographic images. A lot of processes don't do that. In fact, 
sublimation is very popular with the professional photography industry. They're using it for wedding portraits, and you know people spend a lot of money for those because of its picture perfect capabilities, which can be very useful to you because there's a lot of things out there, and you'll see some examples as we go through uh, that require that degree of color clarity and precision detail. And it, provided you have the proper artwork, okay, you can reproduce it with sublimation because sublimation is like anything else. Garbage in equals garbage out. But as long as you got really good stuff, yes. Uh, quick question that I've that I've wondered about is, um, could you just talk about when we're looking at these photos here that are extremely high quality, and I've I've seen samples that are pretty amazing. How? Tell me where the, it's most important to have the high quality product to get that type of, of reproduction. And let's say we start with high quality artwork to begin with. I know right. that's important. But is it most important that the substrate be of a very high quality or with a, a, a polymer based surface? Is it the inks and the printer? Is it the quality of the printer that you use? Is it you know, the, the perfect setting on the heat press, you know, there's four components there. Right. Um, the the concept here is, I mean, obviously, let's start off with the substrate. The substrate has to have a polymer coating or it's not going to work, okay? And there are, for example, the far right is actually an aluminum photo panel, but it has a polymer coating on it, okay? And you got to have a good, you know, good consistent coating because I've had people ask me about buying some type of spray on or do it yourself. And the trick with it is getting a consistent um, application of the polymer coating. And the companies that manufacture this are using computer precision uh, machines to put that coating on there. And they'll actually put a coating and sand it and put another coating and sand it. And so it's a multi-step production process to get that coating. So if you have a substandard coating, you're going to have a substandard image. Okay, so that's why you want to make, you know, stick with the best substrates, you know, making sure that they've been professionally manufactured. It's tough to do your own. It really is, okay? But the guys out there like Unisub that are producing most of these, they do a fantastic job. So that's pretty much taken care of. The second thing with the printer, I mean, you obviously have to be using a printer that is designed to manage sublimation inks, and, and you have to take care of the printer uh, properly. Um, but as long as it's one of the ones that is designated sublimation ready by Sawgrass, since we're the ones making the cartridges or, or the, the bulk systems for it, you should be fine. The differences in the printers, when you really start looking at printers, is you do have some four color, six color, and eight color options. And traditionally an eight color printer gave you prop, potentially better skin tones if we're doing photography because you're using a base of eight different colors to mix your colors with, as opposed to a four color where you're working on four basic color CMYK. But through new developments in technology and inks, and we've been doing some beta testing of the four color like Rico system against like the eight color uh, Epson 4880 with some of the photographers, and they're very, very happy with those four color Rico systems. They're seeing the proper clarity that they need to get with a four color system. So you know, buying the right printer has a lot to do with buying the right size of printer, for example, because a Ricoh 3300 has a much smaller print area than, say, the 4880 or even the Ricoh 7000, okay? So a lot about when you're buying your printer, you're looking at the speed of the print and you're looking at the area of the print, okay? Uh, beyond that, the printers that we support are all good quality printers. Um, when you go to the heat press, you know, certainly it's a time, temperature, and pressure combination, and it's um, a fact of balancing those three. And uh, we have tables on the you know the, the Sawgrass website that give you settings, and and you guys probably have some of those yourself. Um, and there's nothing wrong with a little of experimentation in there, because one of the things with a really good quality heat press, you have very good consistent heating, and if you have a lower end heat press then, you know, especially those people that went out and bought one on eBay, uh, you tend to have inconsistent heating, and that inconsistent heating can definitely affect the image. So I always tell people, if you're new, buy a good quality heat press. Because if your heat press is 400 degrees consistently across the whole platen, you're going to get good imaging. If it's 400 degrees here 
and 380 degrees on, on one edge and 375 on another edge, you know what? And then 400, like say in the middle, you're going to have very inconsistent imaging. So good quality heat press is important. Does that pretty much answer your, your question there, Carl? Yeah, that's good. Okay, excellent. Okay, I, I mentioned also that uh, there are... Um, a lot of apparel products that we can do with sublimation. I, I know a lot of times when you hear polyester, you go, ick, at least I do, okay? But with the new poly performance materials that are out there in the marketplace, and, and these are the moisture wicking garments that are used, you know, very strongly in athletics, but more and more in the main mainstream retail because of companies like Under Armour. Because Under Armour has gone and taken um, poly performance and really made it sort of a household word. And if you're out there selling and you're kind of new to selling poly performance and your customers don't know what it is, I always say reference Under Armour. Because when we sublimate this particular material, as I said earlier, it's not going to fade when laundered and it's not going to crack and it's not going to peel. And that's a very important aspect because it's embedded down in the surface. In fact, if you take anything that's been sublimated and rub your hand across the design, you can't feel it because it's down in the fibers. So tons of products out there. Yeah, Carl mentioned that at the very beginning. There's a wide range. You know, if, if you're doing something like with the Chroma Blast, Chroma Blast is designed for cotton. You're going to do well, cotton apparel, obviously. But when we go into sublimation, we start doing all these other different things, which means a wider variety of markets. And one of the things that, that I point out to people is that it, it, according to a recent um, survey of the business world, uh, it, it takes approximately six times more time, effort, and money to bring in a new customer than to service an existing customer. So if you're already having a customer base and they're already buying something from you, let's say you're a screen printer, they're buying t-shirts from you, you know what, those customers probably have a need for promotional products and awards uh, and different advertising um, items, signage. I mean, there's a wide variety of other things they need that they're buying from someone other than you. But if they're already your customer, and you can suddenly offer these things to them for a very low cost to yourself, um, suddenly you're going to get more money from every customer that you have or more potential with every customer. Yeah, Jimmy, can I jump in here? Yes. So I was just talking to one of our customers the other day. They have a traditional, maybe not traditional, but they have a, they have a sign shop. They have a vinyl cutter, and they, they have somewhat of a, a storefront. And this particular customer had bought a, a sublimation system. And he knew a little bit about what, what it could do, but he, he didn't know uh, a, a ton about it, about the products. And his customers really, he had first tried to put, you know, a, a banner saying, hey, I offer, you know, sublimation shirts and, um, you know, we offer these products. And he didn't have a lot of demand. Uh, but then he went and basically, if you look at this slide here, he went and created some mouse pads, and he did them for customers that he already had, so he didn't try to invent things. He, right. You know, he has, uh, somebody that's got a, a sign shop has got their customers' logos, typically, and so he just started to make mouse pads with about four or five of his good customers' different logos. He made some car tags. I think he made some mugs um, and little signs. He made some luggage tags and keychains. And he just put them out in the in the front of his shop um, in a little display case, and that was, you know, that that was all he needed to do. Yep. And in fact, every one of those customers placed orders for at least one of the things he had displayed once they just touched it and felt it. Right. It just was a very easy sale that he went in and literally created samples for his customers to start his business. Yeah, you make a great point, and a little bit later in the presentation, we're actually going to cover that exact subject, you know, how to go out and sell this, because he made the classic mistake. He said, we're offering sublimated this, that, and the other. Most people don't know what sublimation is. That, that doesn't work. Um, instead, he turned around and gave them real-world examples of products that were useful to them. And we're going to touch a little bit more on that as we go. Um, okay. 
real quick, uh, I was just going to walk through the steps of sublimation. I gave you a quick overview, and I think we've, we've covered most of it already, but we'll just touch on it real quick. Um, if you're going into sublimation, you have these basic components. You have a computer, and, and raise your hand if you don't have a computer. Okay, So you probably already got that taken care of. Um, you're going to need a printer that is designed to accept and deliver you know, the sublimation. Okay? And it's not just any printer. There's no Hewlett Packards, for example. Um, there's two models of RICO, and there, there are a couple of Epson models. Okay? The key is the right type of print head, okay? and, and that's why it doesn't work for every printer. And then you need some type of heat press. Okay, and most people, of course, are using a flat press for 99% of what they're doing. And then if you're actually doing mugs, uh, there's actually a mug press, and there's another alternative we'll, we'll briefly mention, too. But these are the basic components. Okay, uh, So it's, it's a pretty low-cost investment to get started in there. And we, we reference the production as being a three-step process. We call it step one, create, step two, print, and step three, press. So create, print, press. And you know the starting point becomes taking a graphics program, and no, there isn't like a specific sublimation graphics program that you have to go buy, as you might have with some other you know, um, processes out there. Typically, people are using um, the Creative Suite or the Photoshop or Illustrator out of that, or CorelDRAW, Photoshop Elements. They're using basic hey, graphics Jimmy? programs. Yes? Yeah, hey, I'd like to jump in here. Um, re regarding the, uh, a lot of our customers U.S. cutter customers, in fact, you know, they, they get into um, vinyl cutting and 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 they could be getting into sublimation and and you know are are just not familiar or have not used uh, a graphic design program before. And there's there's so many different options. Right. That you know, some some people even want to use you know uh, Microsoft Word programs or, or getting. <laughs> online or basic stuff. And I just want, I'm going to ask Levi to jump in here and explain kind of the, you know, what it's like to try to use a program that uh, is not maybe a traditional design program like CorelDRAW and Adobe Illustrator and what the limitations are. And then what the value is if, if, you, if you go to that and, and what you can do differently. So I'm going to ask Levi to answer that question. Well, one of the primary issues with uh, trying to uh, use dye sublimation without any advanced design software like CorelDRAW, Photoshop, or Adobe Illustrator uh, is that you really don't have any way to manage your color profiles. And um, if you've ever done any printing, uh, you, you, you know that color profiles are, are really very important. Um, if you don't have uh, anything managing your color profiles, then what you see on screen and what comes out of your printer can oftentimes be very, very different. Um, on top of that, with a lot of these other Unisub products that we've been talking about, you know, the, uh, the ID tags and the uh, metal plates and, uh, and the coasters and so on, um, there's lots of uh, finely tuned templates that are in the vector, the vector format that are very important. Uh, to, it's very important to use those. Um, and those are in formats uh, all, that are already accepted in Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. So, Having one of these programs uh, can be very valuable for both of those reasons, both in making sure that your prints are going to be the right size and that you have the right bleed on them and that everything's going to fit properly, and making sure that the color on the screen and the color that comes out of the printer is, um, is going to match up as close as possible. Yeah, and if you're using um, either Photoshop or CorelDRAW, uh, with the, if you've bought the Sawgrass um, Subligit system, which uh, U.S. Cutter sells. Uh, we also provide a uh, free driver uh, with that we call Power Driver. And it's uh, a driver for the printer. It also provides some color management capabilities. But one of the really neat things is it has a color uh, palette that you can actually install into either Photoshop or CorelDRAW. And that means that when you're working within those programs, you're using a palette that's already been um, set up specifically with sublimation in mind and it makes the process that much more accurate as you go. And it's easy to do that and, and there's actually tutorials you know on the website and video too. Um, one of the other neat things is when you're working with um, uh, for example with with CorelDRAW, um, a lot of what you're doing is you're working with substrates that are a unique shape. For example, 
uh, I'm showing you a coaster here. But your artwork tends to be rectangular. Okay, you're working with a JPEG, let's say, and it's in a rectangle. How do we get that rectangular rectangle onto that round surface there? How, how do we make it fit? So every time I see this, I start thinking of the, that psychological test about square pegs and round holes, but whatever. Okay, so um, the neat thing is, is if you bought these uh, coasters from Unisub, they do provide a template for that exact item, and they provide a file that will go into your Corel or for, for Photoshop. In the case of Corel, if you take this rectangular item of artwork and basically you're going to merge it with this template using the power clip function, and power clip what it does is it will actually crop it to fit the exact shape. And that's a pretty neat, quick, easy tool. And, and you're going to see some products we go through that aren't necessarily round or rectangular. I mean, they actually have some really strange shapes to them. But that's how we're doing because we need a full bleed image when we're doing you know, our hard substrates. And, and that's basically how we're doing it. Photoshop, you're using the layers function. So those are you know, those reasons that Levi are talking about. If you're using these particular programs, it's actually going to make your life a little bit easier. But you know, as long as you can create a JPEG, you're halfway there. A good JPEG. Okay. Uh, we already mentioned the printers pretty much. We're going to take that image, set it up, print it out onto transfer paper using sublimation ink. And then we're going to go to that heat press, and we're going to provide a garment or hard item on the heat press along with the, um, the, the transfer paper, and boom, it, it causes the process to take place. All pretty simple and pretty quick, actually, because we usually only put it, you know, if you're using a Ricoh printer, you can do like an 8 by 10 image in about 30 seconds, and then you put it in the heat press for about a minute. So it, it's a pretty quick process. So what does it cost? Well, you know what? You can ask U.S. Cutter because they're the ones that have the different packages and, and this, that, and the other. Um, this, I just generically throw out there, startup packages under 1,000. The reality is you've already got, if you already have a heat press, they're a lot less than that. Uh, but that final package is going to depend on what you buy. So, I mean, don't get too wrapped up with that number. Um, Carl's going to show you some packages at the end. So you, And there's a good variety of packages out there that meet every need and a wide range of prices depending on what's in the package. The main thing I want you to take with you is you're not getting into a $20,000 thing. You're getting into something very low cost that has a lot of different output opportunities for you. Okay, so what does it cost to, to print? Well, there's a lot of variables, you know, the size of the image and, you know, that type of thing. But we've done some testing just to try and give you a good reference um, for you. And we took this particular image here. And we printed it as an 8 by 10. And this was printed on the Rico 7000. And it averaged 64 cents in cost and printed in under 30 seconds. So it's not an expensive. That 64 cents was ink and paper. Doesn't include labor or anything like that, OK? But bottom line, that's not very expensive. And then when you're doing a lot of things smaller, and you do a lot of smaller things, but it doesn't mean you carry a small price tag, you can start to realize that some of the things you're going to print may only cost you 25 cents. You know, worth of ink. So it's a very low cost process. Jimmy. Yes. So let's. You know, what one of the things that that we're offering um, is three different types of printer. We have the the Ricoh 3300, the seven, the Ricoh 7000, and the Epson 4880. And just for 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 our audience out there, the Basically, if you could confirm what I'm saying, as you go up from the 3300, you're going up in capability in terms of size of what you can print. Yes. So, um, you know, one big image, or if you're doing multiple coasters, what we call multiple ups in, in screen printing, you can do more on a piece of paper. So that's that's lowering your overall cost of an image because you're being able to, to buy your paper more efficiently. You can buy it in rolls and you can fit more on there. The other thing too is your your price per image on the ink is is also going down as you get into the bigger systems. Is that true? Um, you know, there's a lot of variables of what ink costs on any given type of thing but for what you've said and for what you carry um, you're you're fine okay uh, for those particular printers what you said is yes 
Um, it, but, you know, but there are a lot of variables that take place on what you know the ink cost really is. But I'm making it too complex. Yes is the answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, for example, uh, the Ricoh 3300, uh, the maximum paper size is eight and a half by fourteen. The 7000 is 13 by 19, and the 4880 is 17 by 22. Plus, the 4880 has you can get a roll uh, option where you can actually put roll paper into it, which means even you know larger sheets theoretically. Um, that same image on the 4880 is about 45 cents to print, and I think it's 72 cents on the Rico uh, 3300. So what you're saying is, is correct about size and cost. Okay, one of the things that, that is important to understand with sublimation is, like anything else out there, sublimation's got great points and it has a few of its own limitations. And um, so one of them is the challenge of printing on darks. Now, as I mentioned in the very beginning, first of all, we're talking about a dye, not an ink. And with a dye being basically a translucent type of thing, the color of the dye must always be darker than the, the, the background color, number one. And because it's a dye, it's not really possible to create the color white in a dye, but you could, you know, within reason with an ink, even though a lot of ink systems don't have a white ink either. Now, in the world of, of screen printing and direct to garment printing, some of the direct to garment printers, um, in order to be able to print on a dark background, what they actually do is create a white background because really and truly white is the best color to print on, period. And just to give you a quick little graphic, um, for purposes of screen printing and direct to garment printing, they'll actually apply a layer of this very thick white ink. Um, and if you look, have done screen printing, it's, it's kind of like pudding, okay? Very thick. And what they've done is they've put this layer that has basically recolored the background to be white in the area that they're going to print. And then they put their colored image on top of it. And they leave the areas of the image that you can see on here that are white. You leave those open in the artwork so that the background just shows through. So they don't keep adding white ink. Now, the big trick for these guys is with screen printing, especially they put down white ink and then they have to cure it with heat before they put the rest of the ink on top. Uh, with direct to garment, they use a self-curing ink that tends to cure as soon as it hits air, but you know you have to be careful that it doesn't cure inside the print heads. Okay. So it's a little tricky to do anything on dark. Okay. And, and that's how some of the methods out there you're seeing being done today are, are doing it. Okay. Now just as important to understand the white ink on a dark garment is used as a base so that the rest of the colors show up. But the white ink also on a color background is used to you know reproduce the color white. You know if you take traditional artwork it's the, the white areas are left open. That's just the way that it is because most printers don't have white ink. So you see the eagle here is white, but that's the t-shirt showing through. We put it on blue, and he turns blue, okay, because this is the t-shirt show, color showing through again, okay. So that becomes a bit of a challenge if you don't have white ink. Now, when we start talking about sublimation, sublimation, only a portion of what you sublimate is actually apparel. And the only time that the dark background issue really becomes an issue is with apparel. Because with sublimation, pretty much all the substrates that you'll ever decorate that are the hard substrates, there's two things. Number one, the surface is white. Number two, your image is as large, if not larger, than the surface. So we're covering the entire surface with our image. Therefore, you see right here on the screen, I have a white, uh, basically a photo panel, a white photo panel. But then when I go to sublimate it, suddenly you see, wow, you, it looks like I had a black photo panel that I put the image on. No, I recolored the entire photo panel when I did the image. Okay, So all that black is actually ink or dye put onto the white surface. And since, you know, like I said, the majority of what you're sublimating is the image is larger than the surface that you're decorating, and the background is already white, you're recoloring that item to be what you want it to be. Okay, and you'll see other examples of that as we go. It's only when we get into garments that we really start running into the problem because the image is usually smaller than the garment. And therefore, uh, when we have a colored garment, we have the issue of color showing through where we wanted the white to be, unless everything we did was white. You, you've probably heard people tell you you can only sublimate white. That's not true. The limitation is white is, number one, the best color because you get the best color clarity. 
And number two, without white ink, you can't reproduce the color white on a colored background. But you can certainly sublimate, as you can see in this image right here, red has been sublimated using black sublimation dye. The yellow shirts have been sublimated here. That worked fine. Okay? So you can sublimate on color. Now, you may run into some garments out there, just so you don't think that I'm lying to you, that have been sublimated that are dark. For example, you see this, this item on the left. Okay? It's a black shirt. It's been sublimated. How do they do that? Well, they started out with a white shirt, and they sublimated the entire shirt is how they did it. If you look on the shirt we pulled up the tail, you can see inside it's white. Um, and this was done actually using a wide format process. And this is not something you just go and run and jump into. There's people out there that can do it for you. The only reason I even show it to you is to be aware that there are companies that can do wide format printing on poly performance materials using a dye sub. Okay, just so you'll know that that's something that can be done. Uh, but what they basically did was they made a transfer that's as big as the front and one that's as big as the back. And they sublimated the entire front and sublimated the entire back. Um, and if it was had a collar or something, they had to do it as a cut and sew process. So they did the different pieces of the garment. Uh, so that's just that's just one of those awareness things. I think it's always people should know you know a little bit about how some of those things are done in case you run into it. Okay, so let's cross over and 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 talk about actually marketing a sublimation. Because this is how you make money with it, how well we go out and, and market it. It, it. You know, Carl made such a great example. If he had a customer who took on sublimation, he started telling me we did sublimation. And most people are like, well, whoop de do because they know what that is. The reality is sublimation is everywhere, okay? I mean, it, it is people buy it, they like it, they, they want it, but they don't know what it is, okay, because they don't know what sublimation is. They just know what the product is, and it just happens to be you created that product using sublimation. Okay, that's an important aspect to understand the difference. They just know what it is they want it. They don't know how it was made. Okay. So if you look, for example, in the world of schools and sports, and here's another great example where I was talking about the, the sublimation and putting the color. If you look at this particular award plaque over here on the top right hand corner, you know it's a burgundy with black trim. Well, the whole thing started out white. And then what they did for their artwork was they just set up one big transfer for this whole plaque that incorporated the color that they wanted the plaque to be. Same thing down here. This started out all white and then they sublimated in the entire set of graphics. So most of the items that you're sublimating are what we call full bleed, which means that you're completely covering it, the exception being garments. Okay? And therefore the color Lack of white's not an issue because you can see here in this image here with the football player, you have white because the white areas were open. Okay, you have white, you have white, you have white. So it's not as big a limitation as you might think when you're first looking into it. Jerry, it, yes. So we we have a lot of our customers that have started out with a, a vinyl cutter and they're doing work for schools and one of the things they do for schools and sports teams are jerseys. Yes. Where they'll, where they'll outfit a team, do the custom numbers, cut it out, they'll use their heat press and with the sublimation system, I mean pe people these days that I've seen, I have kids in sports, are the parents are so committed to their teams that they will spend money on you know, finishing out the process of, okay, they have their t-shirts. If you can provide that team with, you know, keychains, customized keychains with a picture of their kid on every single one in their uniform after you've taken the team picture, you know, put it on a plaque, um, a, a, a luggage tag, just a couple of the things you have here, it, it's... It, you know, it's almost not like, you know, will you buy this? It's how fast can you make this for me and right. you know, whatever I got to spend. I mean, they, they just love this stuff because it, it's not something you would ever throw away either. It's also kept as a memento years and years afterwards as right. a, kind of a memory of their of, of that experience. And, and so it's an emotional purchase. Right. Um, and, you know, the, the key thing here becomes, because I've worked on both sides of the fence with uh, spirit fundraiser concepts, and 
you know, we've gone, for example, I've been a booster president myself where we've sold spirit products as fundraisers for the organization. By the same token, I've created spirit programs to offer to those types of organizations like the PTA, athletic boosters, band boosters, or whatnot, so that they become like the salespeople, but we're producing the products and then they're reselling them to the parents, just as you pointed out. And a lot of variations in that. Sometimes you're just putting graphics on a wide range of products that can be sold. And, and this stuff is being sold, for example, I was a band booster president, and at every football game we have a booth where we're selling all these different things with the school mascot name and everything, and all those kind of things you, you listed and more. Okay? And then the other variation becomes, especially with sports, is if you can maybe – you know, link up with a professional photographer who's taking these shots on the field like you see uh, the kid lining up here with a football. And, and then it's like, you know, offering a dozen different things to the parents with their kid on there. And, you know, through the power of sublimation digital, you can personalize it with this name, the year, the team name, you know, various things. You know, here's a great example here because that's the same image used right here on this particular plaque in the shape of the football. And so you, you can carry this over so much. That's where you make the money in the schools anyway, because most schools don't have any money. You're making the money by selling to the parents, just as you were pointing out. And the same thing with the awards. You know, plaques and awards are expensive, and, and yet, you know, they have a banquet every year for athletic boosters, and they're giving out awards to the kids. And then you have all the different sports leagues. And instead of doing engraved, you know, plaques, you can do some really cool plaques because this one has a real picture of that guy who's the MVP. And, and I'll show you some more of the plaques and stuff as we go through. There's, there's a lot of neat things you can do out there, really, really neat stuff. You know, you look at corporate and small business and you start thinking, well, hey, you're doing their signage maybe already. But um, you know what? There's a lot of indoor type of signage, you know, the, the desk plates, um, you know, very creative, hard core uh, signage here that doesn't crack or peel because it's been sublimated into the surface. Clocks even you can put, you know, decorate. Uh, lots of promotional products. Sublimation is great for all these different types of, uh, of promotional products products out there um, for businesses to use. Um, so there's just a wide range of stuff in the business world that can be sublimated to make money for you and to help your customer, um, you know, with their needs. And even step over to retail. You know, you start looking at retail's area because, again, sublimation is so easy to personalize the things that you're creating because you use your graphic software, you take a cool image, you add in some text and whatnot, and maybe the person's personal image or personal picture. And anytime you're doing that, you're driving the price up because it's unique to them. And keywords like customization and personalization have a lot of power. And then you've got all kinds of things out there. And this is where I always encourage people to be unique. This may not be what you're getting ready to see, something you want to do. okay? But I'd just like to show you some of the creative things that are being done in the sublimation world out there. okay? And in this case, it's end-of-life commemoration. And what you see here is casket cap panels because they call, they call this door, lid, whatever you want to call it. That's actually called a cap. And... You've probably never noticed it, but they pretty much all have a recessed rectangular area as part of the manufacturing process. And what's happening here, and this can be done with a 4880 in most circumstances, but it couldn't be done with a smaller printer, is they've gone and printed fabric with an image and the person's image, maybe their name, uh, Bible verse, a, a, a very popular quote or something that made that person. and and Listen, this is how it's done, okay? It might sound cheap, but there, you're make, putting it on fabric. You're wrapping the fabric around basically a hard cardboard type of panel. You're taping it on the back side. Believe me, I've been in factories seeing this happen, okay? And then they use double-sided tape so that the funeral director can actually press it in. Now, to do this, because I get asked a lot of questions after I show these images, you really got to sit down. You're probably going to work at the funeral home level. You probably need to go see your funeral director and start doing some measurements before you do anything else to find out what size casket caps there are because there's not like a universal size. And you need to be able to figure out, you know, you got to be able to cut your components to fit, okay? But other than that, that's how it's done. 
These things retail through funeral homes for about 350 bucks. Um, you know, there's a little bit more than 75 cents worth of ink on this, but you know, it's not anywhere close to that. So it's a fairly low cost thing for you to produce, and you can turn around and probably sell it to them. If they're selling for 350, you know, you can sell it to them for 175. So something to look at, but it may not be one anything you want to do with. It's just to show you some of the uniqueness available out there. All right, so can you make money with sublimation? Absolutely, yes. Okay, um, but you know what? It takes more than just having the best equipment and the best dealer like U.S. Cutter to get you going there. Uh, it takes a good solid business approach with an emphasis on sales and marketing, plus a good dose of creativity. And sublimation really allows us to have a lot of creativity. But the most important thing is know what it is you're selling. If you think you're selling sublimation, you're wrong. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of test questions so you better understand what I'm talking about. Visual's good. Okay, so what is this? If you look on the screen right now, you should see a collection of mouse pads. And if you answer, hey, Jimmy, you know what? Those are mouse pads. I'll say, you, technically, you're correct. And someone else might say, you know what? They're sublimated mouse pads. I'll say, congratulations, you got that right, too. But if you go to a customer and say you're selling sublimated mouse pads, it's not very awe-inspiring. Okay, it's not good. It's not getting them that, that, that need to go out and buy it, okay? But what this really is is advertising, and that's the part you got to really focus on. It's okay that you sublimated it, but the key is how does it benefit the customer, okay? What is their benefit from buying this product from you? And that's called putting the spin on it, okay? It's all about advertising, okay? Why should they pay you for this? Because you're going to help them advertise their business so they draw more customers and they make more money. And, and I will show you in a few minutes a really cool mouse pad concept, okay, because there's a lot more to mouse pads than just putting logos on there. But, you know, the whole advertising spin is important. You're always looking for a spin. You know, one of my favorite spins involves this particular shirt that you see here on the screen. Okay, this is the basis for the spin. Now, how many people out there have never heard of Hard Rock Cafe? None of you, because you've all heard of it. And it's not because of their great TV commercials that are radio spots, because they don't do any. And it's not all the ads that they do, because they don't really do those either. It's because of what you see on the screen. It's because of the T-shirts and, uh, you know, the dog tags and the uh, bag tags and all these different things that they sell, okay? Now, a lot of people think Hard Rock is a restaurant that sells souvenir goods. The reality is Hard Rock is um, a T-shirt shop that sells hamburgers, to be honest, because their whole business model is around this type of thing. But you know what? The key here, and this is what I want you to take with you, is the customer for Hard Rock is paying them to advertise for them. That's what's happening. That's where all their fame comes from is from that. And many a customer I've walked into and actually said, how would you like it if I could show you a way to have your customer pay you to advertise for you? It doesn't work with every client, but I still tell a lot of clients, products that they can resell. So see, I didn't say I can do you a sublimated t-shirt. I would approach the, the souvenir at the restaurant, because I live at the beach. we got lots of souvenir places. But you know, any of these restaurants over here at the beach, I'm approaching with the same thing. How would you like it if I could show you a way to have your customer pay you to advertise for you? Then I can show them the sublimated poly performance tea. Okay? You see where I'm going with that? I gave them a compelling reason to spend the money with me. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, everything that we do. You know, how do we position that product? Next test question, what's this? Coffee mug. Okay. It says, I love New York. So maybe it's advertising from New York. Yeah, I guess it is. But actually, we call this a souvenir. Okay. And there's a lot of psychology that goes in with a souvenir because people want to buy and take home a piece of a great vacation with them. They want to be able to say, been there, done that. So if you're going to be in the souvenir world, and trust me, I do a lot of souvenir products, there's two key components. Number one has to say where you were. Has to have the name drop. Number two, needs to be creative, good-looking artwork. Now, there's one item on the screen that doesn't qualify as a good souvenir. That's over here on the top left. You know why? It doesn't have the been there, done that. Now, I know that's the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse because I live in North Carolina, but most people don't. It really should say North Carolina, Cape Hatteras NC or whatever. So I put that as a perfect example. But if you're working this marketplace, the most important thing is you want really good graphics, but you want to say where the person's been. Lighthouses of Ohio. Margaritaville, Key West. There's a guy that bought that, bought it because it said Key West, and they just happened to like it because it, you know, everything else. So you get in the souvenir world, 
you got to start to think like souvenir people. Okay, you got to think about the products, and you're creating the products. You don't have to tell the 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 the, tea, the souvenir shop this is a sublimated coffee mug. You're just showing them a real cool product that they can resell. That's the key, and that's exactly what Hard Rock's all about. It all goes back to that. For Hard Rock, it's not just advertising; it's souvenir products. Because again, the reason the people buy it and Hard Rock knows it is because it says, in this case, Orlando. Great graphic. But they're buying it because they want to tell everybody where they went. A lot of psychology in selling. Okay, what's this? Hmm, license plate. Sublimated license plate, too. It looks like a sports team, so maybe it's related to schools. You know, we already touched a little bit on it. spirit products, man. There's a lot of money in the world of spirit, and there's so many different products that can be put together to sell to that marketplace. You know, and spirit is not just the high schools. I mean, you know, I got one daughter who's Pop Warner cheerleading. You know what? You go to these cheerleading competitions, man, boom. They got tons of people selling all these things. They got a picture of your kid, you know, sublimated onto something like the megaphone there. And uh, there's a real there's a lot of neat stuff you can do with that particular marketplace. Um, and, and you know, Carl really hit on that well, that value to the people of saying, Hey, that's my kid, you know, and that stuff will be around forever. You know, they don't throw nobody throws this stuff away. Um, it's embarrassing as you get older and your parents show you the stuff they got of you back when you were young and you're like, oh my God, I had that haircut. Ooh. Oh well, this thing about pictures that capture moments in time forever. Um, what's this? Well, back to a t shirt. Willow Lake Hunting Club. This is a great example of making a statement. You know, I do a lot of work with clubs and special events because people everywhere want to be able to make a statement. Sublimation is a great way to do it because the way that we can mix graphics and text together. And I've gone into a lot of deer hunting clubs, for example, and it's sold them a clip art of a deer with the name of their business on there, and boom, supplement. It's easy, okay? And they were paying top dollar for it. They're, they're not expecting a you know a five dollar giveaway shirt that you see in some of the beach shops. They're, they're paying top dollar for these things because it allows them to make the statement. You know, I'm a deer hunter. I'm a fisherman. I'm a, a race car driver, or whatever. You know, I find a lot of groups are very good for that. But I like to go beyond that because that's where the creativity comes in. And that is when you can start working on some really cool graphics and combining those with text, then people can really make a statement. And you can apply this to just hundreds of different items You know, with sublimation. You're not just talking about apparel here. You're talking about many, many, many different types of items that can be sublimated. And that same logo or image can be used on lots of different things. Okay, final thing in my test question, but it's just showing you the power of marketing. Because a lot of what we looked at here was what I call positioning your product. Because by using keywords and you start to position the product um, at a higher level. And that's important because price really comes down to perception. People only pay what they think it's worth. And if you're able to elevate their perception of worth a higher level, you can get a higher price out of it. And that's important about everything that you're doing. You don't have to use the word sublimation unless people really put a lot of worth on sublimation. But you're starting to talk about you know the value of the benefit to them. And I always end up in my marketing segment with the picture of the pet rock because it's such a great example of how somebody took something that has very, very little intrinsic value of any kind and turned it into a mega million dollar product. And that was the pet rock. Okay? They took a polished rock and sold it to people as a pet. You know, and it's amazing because it's proof that people buy just about anything. It's packaged creatively. And I really don't even mean the packaging here, the physical packaging. I'm talking about how they present it, what was the terminology, what were the key phrases, the words. Those are the power of marketing sales, you know, to encourage people to buy and pay top dollar. You know, perception is reality. You're only going to pay what it's worth. you got to focus on that, okay, uh, in everything you do. Uniqueness, creativity, coolness. That's important. Picture's worth a thousand words. Carl already pointed that out. When the guy started putting samples out, people started buying the product. And that's one of the really, really nice things about sublimation is we're able to turn ordinary into extraordinary. Because most of the stuff that you're decorating starts out as something very s small, insignificant, boring, like a mouse pad. You see a mouse pad on the screen. That's how you get it out of the box. It's a white foam kind of thing, okay? waiting for you to decorate it and give it value. Now, this is a mouse pad. This is one of the coolest mouse pads. I know it's kind of small on the screen, but let me tell you what it is. This is a great promotional product 
because what, what Sally Ann's has done here, and this is based on a real restaurant, we just changed the names to protect the guilty. Um, they've created a mouse pad that has their delivery menu imprinted on it, as well as you know the price, the 800 number to call for delivery, and the nice big juicy burger, which is supposed to entice you unless, of course, you're a vegetarian. But what they did was they're giving these out to their customers in hopes that their customer, because it's a useful item, a mouse pad's useful, okay? They're going to use that mouse pad, and day in and day out, they are going to be looking at what? A picture of a burger that makes them hungry, as well as the menu that goes with it, so that how hard is it to order from Sally Ann's? It's all right there in front of you 24-7. That is a cool product, okay? That product costs, let's see, mouse pad a buck or so, maybe 50 cents worth of ink. Not a lot of money put into that, okay? But the end result is pretty awesome. But just some other examples going into it. We already saw that image earlier. I mean, that's pretty ordinary. Actually, it's actually pretty good because the quality is so good. But instead of putting that, that, just the picture of the kid on a photo panel to sell to the parents, beef it up with some graphics. That's a really unique, unique plaque that's available from Unisub in the shape of the football, okay? And look, look at the difference. I mean, we have added a little bit of time for those graphics. It didn't cost us any more to print it, just a little more time to set it up. And once you have that as a template, boom, all you're doing is dropping in, you know, a new year. <laughs> so hopefully they win every year, right? Okay, but the point I'm getting is just a little bit of extra graphics work. We've actually increased the value of this without actually doing anything more significant in production. You know, here's another great example. We got the kid playing baseball, great action sports, great school type spirit type of thing. Okay, and here we change a boy into a girl. Okay, I didn't have another version of him. But what we have here is we have a photo panel that's a little different. This photo panel actually has a little rounded area in the top left corner. And, you know, through the power of graphics, we set this up where we took her picture, Christina, and then we put in our own different background graphics, put her name, the team name, and we put in a volleyball, just using clip art. Or that could have been a baseball. Or it could have been a golf ball. Could have been a tennis ball. I mean, you know, the, there's a wide range of opportunities. But if you look at the one on the right, it's going to draw a higher selling price, a higher margin than the one on the left. The only difference between the two is graphics. The cost to produce the same. It's just graphic on the one on the right. And once you got that set up as a template, it's a pretty easy kind of thing to do. You know, engraving, the world of engraving has long done plaques and trophies. Engraving's fine, but engraving is very, I don't know, um, colorless for the most part, okay? I mean, look at the difference of this plaque on the right, which has been sublimated, where we have the picture of the actual person. We have the team logo, and we have, you know, the text down here. We created this, printed out in 30 seconds, pressed in one minute. This to engrave took longer than that. And uh, so your production costs are lower on the right-hand side, but it's actually more interesting and commands a higher price tag. Sublimation can do that kind of thing for you. So you penetrate some of the new markets. And then you get that whole packaging kind of thing, you know, where I can do a whole group of products to go offer to whether it's schools, teams, corporate, whatever. And that's one of the best ways to present it is set up a sample kit where maybe you put in the same logo like this uh, gentleman did that Carl referenced in his showcase, maybe you take that same logo and put it on a whole basket of things, okay, because the idea is for them to be able to buy multiple items, okay, more of that creative packaging. You know, in the, the retail level, you're taking the baby, just tremendous amount of money with these newborns, okay, <laughs> you got to pay the doctor, but, you know, here it's a photo panel, it's just a simple art graphic where you would change the kid's name each time and their birth weight and everything else, and you got their image in there. You know, this literally costs you a few dollars to create, but you can turn around and retail it for $30, $35 easy to the family, okay? Quick and easy to do. You know, when she grows older, you can do even more stuff. I mean, those family photos go to a whole different level. And, you know, graphics, they make such a difference. We've got some really cool clip art there. I mean, you know, always be thinking about adding a little bit more excitement. It's easy to do with sublimation. You know, instead of just using a baseball, take that baseball to the next level. Instead of just using a football, take it to the next level. You know, these are the kind of things that we can do that really set ourselves apart when we're using sublimation. 
And one final thing here, if you're getting into this and you haven't really done a lot with like apparel, one of the things I don't like is, you know, a photo on a shirt looks like a photo on a shirt. And you really want to kind of don't get caught in that trap. You know, as a bare minimum, when you're putting images on something that's the image is not full bleed, doesn't cover the whole thing, you're kind of stuck with the shape of the image. And you want to make it as creative as you can. At least put a border on there uh, as a bare minimum. But even better, you start to learn some of that graphic software, like you know the wonderful uh, world of Photoshop or Corel. You can do what we call making the background transparent or removing it. And there, that end result is a whole lot more exciting. So you know you, that's part of that transition into learning to do graphics and making it interesting. You don't have to be a graphic artist. There's enough great clip art out there in the marketplace that you can get your hands on that you don't have to be the guy that created the graphic from the ground up. You just had to be the guy that edited it by adding some text and you know resizing it, modifying it a little bit, you know, cleaning it up. That's a big difference there. So I want to come up here, sum it all up here, and um, and then we'll start taking some of your questions. And, and Carl has some specials and stuff he wants to show you. And uh, so just a couple of things real quick, quick here on the keys to making money with sublimation. Okay. I mean, a big part of this is don't focus on price. You know, I've said it a little bit before, the packaging, positioning, you know, you want to focus uh, on, on really doing good creative work. Because you've got to remember this. I've learned this from my 20 years of doing decorated products. Someone else will always do it for less. If I give it to you for free, someone will pay you to take it. It just never ends. You know what? You want to focus on being the best. And what I mean by that is great graphics unique products, and there's a lot of neat stuff. I didn't show you, you know, but just a small smidgen of the things that you can do with sublimation out there. Creative packaging, how we actually present it to people. And also one of the things I throw out there, go where the money is. Could be a whole other separate subject, but a lot of times people don't want to leave their neighborhood. But I've always focused on a marketplace, and then I've tried to completely saturate that marketplace with myself, okay? Because I do a lot, believe it or not, with saltwater fishing, because I live on the east coast of the United States. And that means we deal with a lot of marinas, uh, tackle shops and whatever. And we travel to other cities following that market rather than getting stuck with the geography because that's where the money is. And that's what I mean by go where the money is. Don't limit yourself. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at some of your questions. We have uh, Carl here and we have Levi. I don't have Levi's name up there, sorry. Um, this is some email addresses that you can reach us if you want to follow up with us. Uh, again, a quick reminder, if you look in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you should have a red box with a white arrow. Clicking on that opens up your text box where you can send in any messages that you want. So I'm going to turn it kind of back over to Carl here. And I know Carl has some specials. I'm going to go to the web page and show you those specials, let Carl talk about it while I process uh, any of your questions coming in. Carl? So um, we've put together um, dye sublimation. We've added that to uh, our portfolio just recently, and, and we are kind of launching it with this webinar. So what Jimmy has gone to right here is, is our page um, where you're going to find some of the different packages that, that we've put together. And so on our site at uscutter.com, we have a, a, a category heading called sublimation. And under sublimation, you're going to see sublimation blanks. You're going to see sublimation packages, paper. So this is under the sublimation packages. And so we have right now, there's two of them right here. We're going to be adding a third. Uh, so the one on the left is the sublegit R. You can see the one for $1,119. That includes the RICO. 3300 includes a 6-in-1 heat press that allows you to do plates, cups, mugs. And we've also thrown in dye sublimation paper. It comes with a set of inks also, Sublojet R inks. And it comes with a small starter package of some sublimatable materials. There's some coasters there. There's some keychains. There's some plaques and some mugs. And so that's uh, a, a basic entry-level uh, package. Then we have 
uh, a more sophisticated one if you want to jump in and, and you're going to do uh, a higher volume right away. I think it's still relatively inexpensive to get into a business, and that features the Epson 4880. That's the one for $51.99. So the big differences in, in that package are that you're getting the, the bigger printer. As Jimmy said, that it handles up to, I think, 24 inches wide. 17 by 22. Yes. Sorry. 17 by 22. And then we have a higher-end heat press. It's the Geonite heat press that has all the attachments with it. So you can add a mug attachment, a hat attachment. And then we have two starter kits of sublimatable materials that we have with that. So you can see on there that in addition to the mouse pads and the mugs, we have license plates, we have license plate frames, and a few other things there. So those are the equipment packages. Now, if you already have a heat press, you have a cutter and some of those other things, and you don't necessarily need to buy a whole package, we, of course, sell the equipment, the printer, by itself. And you can kind of mix and match and buy a sublimation printer, either a, a Ricoh 3300 or a Ricoh 7000 or the Epson 4880, buy the inks and then just buy a starter package of sublimation blanks. And these represent some of the different Unisub and other vendors of sublimatable blanks that we're offering. And so the one package that you will see relatively shortly is one based around the Rico 7000 that's going to sit in between the Rico 3300 and the Epson 4880 in terms of price. So that's on our website at uscutter.com. And I think one of the things you'll see is we're going to be, in, in the coming weeks, is that area on our site is going to continue to expand in terms of the type of sublimatable materials that, that, that we're offering. And so as you contact us and want to know more, Levi is, is one of the people that, that is going to be off. heading this particular process up. He'll be answering questions. You can, you know, ask about, certainly let us know about products that you want to supplement that you don't see there. It's one of the ways that we add products is through our customer requests. Okay. Well, we got some questions coming in here. And um, the first one I'm going to paraphrase, basically, it, she's um, saying that she's run into seeing transfer lines when sublimating apparel. And basically what a transfer line is, is if you have a rectangular sheet of transfer paper and we go to press onto, say, a T-shirt, when we remove the transfer paper, we see a rectangular line in the garment that was where the edges of the transfer paper was. And that's a transfer line. is permanent. doesn't come out. So she's asking about how do you um, eliminate that. Now, there's a couple of different ways. I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago on the Sawgrass site, and you can actually watch that again about sublimating apparel. And one of the cool things out there is there's a foam kit. And this foam kit it uses a high-temperature foam, and it was manufactured specifically for this. And if you're using that, you can pretty much get rid of those lines. Um, because there's a lot of extra details, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But, Carrie, you can certainly follow up with me later, and I'll direct you to where you can watch a, a video, uh, learn a little bit more about that process. Also has a lot to do with this is one of these areas where we start to go outside the boundaries, the normal boundaries of uh, our heat press settings, because part of the foam process also um, involves reducing the pressure of the heat press tremendously. And uh, you can definitely do things without the cut line showing up or, or the uh, transfer line showing up. Um, it's just a matter of changing a few of your parameters. Okay. Uh, next question is probably more for you, Carl, because you guys are really the experts when it comes to you know vinyl products and those type of things. Um, interesting concept. He's asking, can I lay white vinyl on a cotton shirt? and then sublimate onto the vinyl. And is there a polyvinyl material for this? 
And also, what would you suggest for printing on glass? So I, I don't know if you have some concepts on this. Um, I got a couple of concepts, but I'll let you go first. So as far as the, the white heat transfer vinyl um, and then sublimating on top, um, not something I've tested out, though it's, very, it's a very interesting question I intend to test soon. Um, but I do not think it would work properly um, for a number of reasons, but really overall, vinyl isn't meant to be into, isn't meant to take ink um, that the heat transfer vinyl is not meant to take ink and when it is meant to take ink it, it really requires solvent inks and not dye inks so I'm thinking that wouldn't work very well um, but I'll be testing that let's say over the next two weeks and uh, and I'll, I'll definitely be prepared to answer that question if you do call in um, as far as printing on vinyl or on, on a glass goes um, probably what I'd recommend is um, Using an entirely different setup, which would be uh, which would be solvent inks on clear printable vinyl, um, and then you would go ahead and apply that clear printable vinyl up on the glass, and only your graphic would be would be visible. Yeah, one of the things if you can do a cotton shirt, um, you can take like the chromoblast product and print it onto um, opaque transfer paper that has basic an adhesive backing. And then using one of your cutters, uh, you're able to contour cut that so that you get rid of all the excess um, transfer paper. But basically what you did is you created a transfer where the ink stays on the transfer. The back side of the transfer has an adhesive. So when we apply it to the garment, we're actually adhering that piece of uh, transfer material to the garment. And it's not vinyl. Um, so that's you know that's an all there's different alternatives out there uh, that that can be looked at. Okay, Jimmy, do you have any more input on the on the glass? Uh, no, not really. Um, I I think he covered that pretty well. I mean, there are some other things out there, and I'm not really I've never done glass, so I'm, I'm I don't really have anything else to add on that. Okay, next question, what are the costs of the shirts that can be used? Um, keep in mind that if we're doing poly-performance apparel, poly-performance apparel is a much better quality, longer-lasting type of product, and it does cost more. A, a typical poly-performance um, shirt costs about, you know, for a t-shirt, costs about $5 blank, whereas, you know, a 50-50 or 100% cotton might be, well, of course, cotton's going up a lot in price, but it's probably in the one fifty to two dollar range. Okay, poly performance materials cost more, but by the same token, sublimation on poly performance doesn't fade. And if you're talking about a hundred percent cotton shirt that's been screen printed or direct to garment printing, it's going to fade as soon as you wash it. So immediately, the, the comparable products are not as good. Uh, and then if you go out and look in the in the marketplace, an Under Armour T-shirt retails for twenty five dollars. So they've set a price, a benchmark price for poly performance materials, which are moisture wicking, keep that in mind, so they're true performance items at a much higher price. Uh, and that's important when you go out to sell it, because if you try to position it against, you know, five t-shirts for ten dollars, you're going to lose out, because you're not in the same ballpark or not the same category there. By the way, you can sublimate on, this will get me in trouble, I'm sure, but um, I've done it and, and I've covered this for. You can sublimate on 50-50, as in 50% polyester, 50% cotton. You will not get the same color clarity as 100% poly because it's not 100% poly. And when you wash it, it's going to fade at least the first time because if you actually sublimate on the cotton, it'll maybe sort of artificially, some of it will stick to some of the cotton fibers. But once we wash, it tends to wash away. So if we're doing 50-50, it'll permanently bond to the polyester components of the fibers, but not the cotton components. So you can do those, but they, they tend to have sort of a faded, washed-out look. But it's good for special effects, but it's not good when you're trying to have a really um, precise, precision image. Just something to be aware of. Uh, here's a question for you, Carl. How much would it cost for just a printer? So we don't sell the, the printers without the inks. These are pretty much commodities. Uh, the, the Ricos, 
You can buy them all over the place. So, you know, we don't want to be in the just selling consumer or high-end consumer printers. So we offer them with the ink. So, for instance, on the 3300, it's with a set of, of Sublojet inks. It's just under $500. So it's still very reasonable, and you can, on, on our site, you can go to uscutter.com under sublimation, under equipment. You can find the printers listed, and for instance, the 7,000 is just under $1,000, I think. Yep, and the, the uh, 3,300 actually comes up to 450 shipped with the flat rate of shipping, and the 7,000 is just under $1,000 even. Okay. Um, what's the best way to ensure your prints have quality colors? I've run across situations where my greens didn't print press the color green as well as some of the other colors. Levi, you want to tackle that? You chopped out there in the middle. What was the full question? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the best way to ensure that the you're getting good quality color in your sublimation such that uh, she's uh, saying that sometimes our color green doesn't come out quite as well as some of the others. Well, there's various different things you can do, but what's most likely uh, happening here is your whatever software you're using to print from, you know, whether it's Windows, just Photo Gallery, or Corel or Photoshop. If the, there's probably color profiles that are enabled that are affecting your colors. Uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, you'll have an image with some pink and some blue. Um, on your screen, and if you have color profiles, you know, overlapping each other and kind of fighting for priority, uh, when you print, you might have two entirely different colors or faded versions of those colors or, you know, several odd things can happen. Uh, it's very important to go in on Photoshop or Corel um, and, for the most part, actually fully disable the color profiles. Um, it's, it's a bit more difficult to do through Windows, but it's very easy to do through Photoshop and Corel. And once you, once you fully disable these color profiles, uh, then you can start tweaking your colors and the saturation levels of, of the different ink colors in the actual driver itself, um, and you'll find that you have a much better result. Yeah, one of the things, I don't have an image of it to, to show you, but we always recommend that you, you take your color palette, the one that you're using, and we prefer that you use the ColorSure palette um, for the, from the um, power driver, and go ahead and print that on transfer and then press it uh, onto uh, some type of substrate. And usually you can go to, say, Unisub, and you can get the white coated metal. And what you have is you have a reference chart of what the color will look like when it's pressed. And then because when it prints out, it's not just the color, it's also the name of the color. You can look at that chart now, knowing what the actual end result is going to be, and you can have that on the wall. And you'll see that most sublimation shops have these on the wall. And you can say, you know what, this is the green I need to come out, uh, and it's, uh, you know, Jimmy Green or whatever the name is, okay? And so when I go to my screen, I choose the out of the same palette because I have that same palette electronically on the screen. I choose that green based on what the output looks like, not on what it looks like on the screen. So that's, that's a good way to really make sure that we're matching our colors input to output. Jimmy, let me make a correction. Just I, I had said earlier on a question that the Rico 7000 was just under a thousand um, with a set of inks. And I was wrong. That's the price of the printer. When you add a set of inks, it's just under fifteen hundred. Okay. So just to correct myself there. Okay. Well, that's all the questions there, Carl, and. Uh, you know, I, that's pretty much covers everything I had to present, and uh, I guess we probably should go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, any final things you want to comment on? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for being here, and, and I know that uh, people will also be watching this video um, for quite a while as we have it on our site as they learn about sublimation printing, and so we'll probably have some other things available as people are watching this. And the other thing is we you can call us. Uh, our phone number is 425-481-3555, and you'll be prompted to, to ask for sales or technical support. Okay. Um, well, then uh, that pretty much, I think, wraps things up, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to come out and join you today, Carl, and share uh, a little bit with um, your customers out there and look forward to doing some more in the future with you. 
All righty. Thanks, Okay. Jerry. All right. We'll see you later.